Hello and welcome to St. Chad's. We've come together online, but in our Father's presence, to offer him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, praise and thanksgiving, to hear his most holy word, to pray for others as well as ourselves, and to ask forgiveness for our sins. Let us then confess our sins to Almighty God and pray together. For we've all fallen short of the glory of God and the standards he sets for us. Therefore, come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we've avoided your call. Your, our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from all judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God will forgive all who truly repent of their sins and come to Christ in true faith. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. 
Our first reading today is taken from Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise, in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful is its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth, like the heights of Zaphon in Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labour. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God. God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices, the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, count her towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God for ever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading this morning is taken from Isaiah 57 verses 14 to 21 comfort for the contrite and it will be said build up build up prepare the road remove the ob obstacles out of the way of my people for this is what the high and exalted one says he who lives forever whose name is holy I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. I will not accuse them forever, nor will I always be angry, for then they would faint away because of me, the very people I have created. I was enraged by their sinful greed, I punished them and hid my face in anger, yet they kept on in with their willful ways. I will have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest whose waves cast off mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. 
Our message today is taken from the book of Isaiah and chapter 57 and considering the words in Isaiah 57 beginning of verse 14. For, verse 14 begins with this very simple statement. It begins with uh, by saying, and it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out, out of the way of my people. Build up, make, make, make a way. Clear the path. Make, a, make the, the way straight. Make it possible for God's people to get to God himself. And that sounds, sounds uh, in some respects, sounds like a ridiculous thing to be saying to the Jewish people. Because in the temple, there was a great curtain that separated the holy uh, place from the holy of holies. A great big thick curtain that uh, uh, separated the people from God. And that, that, that separation was to be uh, uh, obeyed. It could only be, the only time it could be changed was on the day uh, of uh, when, when the high priest was allowed to go, allowed to go into the temple or into the holy of holy to offer their offerings once a year that was allowed and yet here in the book of isaiah in the old testament under the jewish rules and the jewish laws god is saying not man god is saying make way that my people might come to me listen to it again it says this And it will be said, build up, build up, prepare a road, remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. 
Make a way for the people. This is not a call for John the Baptist, make your way, way for the Lord. This is not John the Baptist being called on here. This is people. This is uh, the people of Israel being told to make way, get out the obstacles, the obstacles out of the way. In Isaiah 35 and verse 8, um, we have uh, there uh, the picture of, the, of this language of building uh, a road, a way for the people to go. Listen to Isaiah 35 verse 8. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on the way. The, the unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. Do you remember how Jesus said about the broad and the narrow way? That the people uh, should take the narrow way and follow the way of the Lord? And today as Christians, we're on the narrow road. We're on the road that's leading to eternal salvation. It's leading to, uh, to God himself. But the world, those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour, they're on the broad way. And they will not walk on the narrow way, on the way that God calls them to go. It describes, this verse describes the highway for God's people, for the people, whatever, the, 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 the people, we must move whatever gets in the way of the people getting to the Lord. What is it that stops people coming into St. Chad's to hear the word of God? What is it that causes the, the difficulties? Is it that we still very much live in past generations? That we still uh, are living in the way that uh, uh, past, uh, past generations live? Is it that uh, we're doing things that we should, that we need to be, is it we're not doing things that we should be doing or is it that we're doing things that we shouldn't be doing? Is it the fact that we're not welcoming? We are, I believe we're a welcoming church, but how would people feel who are new? What have we got to offer? that will bring them in and stay nothing but the word of God. And the word of God needs to be spoken and preached for what it is, the word of God. We saw that last week. We're not going to go into all that again. And so in verse 14, uh, we have this clearing of the paths. And verse 50, 15 goes on to say this, for this is what the high and exalted one says he who lives forever whose name is holy i live in a high and lofty place uh, a high and holy place but also in the with, with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit this tells us that god is in heaven he's in a high and lofty place a high and holy place he is the high and lofty one he is the exalted majesty of all creation high and uh, lifted up and yet it tells us that god is also going to live with men how is that going to be how can that happen how can god be in two places at once well god is everywhere all of the time wherever you go god's there you can't run away from God. He's there. He's the high and lofty one. We need to understand his majesty and recognize who he is. He is the one who is high and lofty and lifted up. But notice that it's the people who come to him who are humble and contrite. The people that are seeking forgiveness the seeking uh, recognizing they're they're being they're on the wrong road and wanting to move and humbly bowing the knee before god that they might know uh salvation and might know the lord god himself choosing to turn from their unrighteousness to the living god choosing to turn from their gods that have no legs and no voice 
and can do no works. Turn from them and turn to the living God who loves and cares and shows mercy. Listen as we read on in this, this uh, portion of scripture. It says uh, that God would revive the spirit of the lowly and revive the heart of the contrite. God will make us fit for glory. It, I will not accuse them forever, nor will I always be angry, for then, then they would faint away uh, because of me and the very people I have created. God says, I'm not going to chase them away forever. I'm not going to chase them away forever. I'm not going to be angry with them forever. If they come and they confess and they repent, I will receive them. I'll receive them to myself. But they've got to come. They've got to get, get through. And the obstacles have to be removed. But there's something else. There's something else. We need to not, not only hear the invitation. But we need to accept the invitation. God says that he will live with people. God invites all people to peace. Shalom is the Jewish word that is used here. God's shalom is more than just the absence of hostility. It's not that kind of peace. Well, it is that kind of peace, but it's more than that. It's more than just the absence of hostility. It's the gift of the precious well-being of God. It's the, pre it's the precious gift, not just of eternal life, but of perfect life. I have come, said Jesus, to uh, that they may have life and have life to the full. The Apostle Paul speaks, to Jesus, uh, speaks of Jesus fulfilling that, this promise exactly. And he came and preach peace to you who are far off and preach peace to those who are near. Jesus came to both Jew and Gentile for you and me, but also for all the rest of humanity. He came to all of them and he preached to both and all can come. All can, be, can, can accept the precious invitation of salvation found in Jesus Christ. All can know that wonderful truth. Let me ask you, do you know that wonderful truth of living in the presence of the high and lofty one? Not just on a Sunday, but on every day of the week. He is the high and lofty one.
Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the collect. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry in a world of plenty. For those who do not know where their next meal is coming from. And for those who can only watch as their children go hungry and sometimes die. Lord, please may they be provided out of this world's bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have the power to change the world. For, le <coughs> pardon me, for leaders of the nations whose decisions can mean the difference between life and death. May they work towards justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work with relief agencies, providing the, uh, provide the funding for them and their agencies so that they can continue to do the services that they do and offer the support that they need. We thank you for our NHS and for all support workers, for those on the front line particularly. We ask for protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who do not want your our pity. They simply want a new chance. For those who do not want our help. For those who need aid, but would rather be allowed the opportunity to live and to grow for themselves. Lord, we pray too for those who do need our help and need our help in such a way that we can help to provide for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we bring before you those that we know who are in need of healing. We pray that they would give, they would give that, that you would give them peace in suffering, strength in their weakness, and where it is your will, healing to body, mind and spirit, for the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let's close our service with the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.